We're back in session and on the record. Well, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody for being here and for providing the input you did. Not just the people who were in the courtroom here, but also those who provided written statements, uh, both from the Floyd family and the defendant's family. I've read all the impact statements that were submitted earlier and listened carefully to all the input here today. And it is truly appreciated that you took the time to stay with this case and to provide me with input. I have reviewed the pre-sentence investigation and carefully considered all the facts of the case and the law, but my comments are actually going to be very brief because most of it's going to be in writing. I have a 22 page memorandum that is going to be attached to the sentencing order. And why am I doing it in writing? To emphasize the fact that determining the appropriate sentence in any case, and in this case, is a legal analysis. It's applying the rule of law to the facts of an individual and specific case. And that is why, as opposed to trying to be being profound here on the record, I prefer that you read the legal analysis that explains how I determine the sentence in this case. What the case is, or what the sentence is not based on is emotion or sympathy, but at the same time I want to acknowledge the deep and tremendous pain that all the families are feeling, especially the Floyd family. You have our sympathies. And I acknowledge and hear the pain that you are feeling. I acknowledge the pain not only of those in this courtroom, but the Floyd family who are outside this courtroom and other members of the community. It has been painful throughout Hennepin County, throughout the state of Minnesota, and even the country. But most importantly, we need to recognize the pain of the Floyd family. I'm not going to attempt to be profound or clever because it's not the appropriate time. I'm not basing my sentence also on public opinion. I'm not basing it on any attempt to send any messages. A trial court judge, the job of a trial court judge is to apply the law to specific facts and to deal with individual cases. And so, Mr. Chauvin, as to count one, based on the verdict of the jury, finding you guilty of unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony under Minnesota Statute 609.19 subdivision 2 paren 1, it is the judgment of the court that you now stand convicted of that offense. Pursuant to Minnesota Statute uh, Section 60904, counts two and three will remain unadjudicated as they are lesser offenses of count one. As a sentence for count one, the court commits you to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections for a period of 270 months, that's 270. That is a 10 year addition to the presumptive sentence of 150 months. This is based on your uh, abuse of a position of trust and authority and also the particular cruelty shown to George Floyd. You are granted credit for 199 days already served. Pay the mandatory surcharge of $78 to be paid from prison wages. You are prohibited from possessing firearms, ammunition, or explosives for the remainder of your life. Provide a DNA sample as required by law. Register as a predatory offender as required by law. And then you will receive a copy of the order and also the attached memorandum explaining the court's analysis. Anything further from the state? If this needs to be said, we just ask that it be executed forthwith. Tenant is remanded to the custody of the sheriff to be transported uh, back to the DOC or whichever custody is currently holding him. Anything from the defense? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. We are adjourned.